Uh, the Beatles. Yeah. Ring Ringo Starr was a big influence on my drumming. I, I didn't know really much about them until like the the fifth grade. You know, I'd grown up and you know heard their music and know that knew that that was the Beatles. I didn't really care. Yeah. But I think we had a lesson about a history lesson in the fifth grade uh, about the Beatles, and there was a picture of them playing. I think at Shea Stadium, and then I went, oh wow, this yeah. is what they were. You know, that was my first impression of them. That was the first time I saw a musician went. Whoa, yeah. I wait got, a second. I got introduced to them when I was like four years old. My uh, dad kept playing Hard Day's Night and Help, like the, the movies, like over and over again when I was growing up. And so uh, that's kind of what got me started in all of this, actually, you know? <laughs> oh, man. The first song I ever wrote was called <clears throat> Pious King Louis the Sixteenth, And it was terrible. I think I was like 14 or 15. And, you know, I thought it was this deep, meaningful piece of art and it was just garbage. No. <laughs> I still have my first recording that I ever did. I was 14 and I played bass and uh, the song was called No Regrets. And it was Much fun. better title than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have the recording somewhere but maybe someday people hear. I, I feel like when you're a kid you don't really know like what you're, what you're singing about yet you know like and as, as you get older you start to learn more and everything but it was just like one of my first attempts and I went and recorded it. And then, yeah, came out on like a local Utah compilation. Really? Oh, yeah. Your first song? One of them, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Pro from day one over here. I think it had to be a, like a, some kind of talent show or mm -hmm. something at a county fair when I was like 15 or 16. My first band, uh, it was a competition, we didn't win. I think the winner was like a, a tap dancing flautist, you know? So, totally slayed us. I had she a, deserved it. I had a jazz trio in high school. And we played restaurants, and that was like one of my first real paying gigs. We played stuff out of uh, the Real Book. So I don't know if you guys know what that is, but uh, it's basically all the jazz standards in, in just one huge book, and you can just get it at any music shop. Yeah. Uh, I think I got paid 60 bucks. I think we got paid collectively $100, and we had to split it between the four of us. So. Yeah. I'm trying to think. It had to be with Panic. It, probably, it was probably in the, the UK. I don't remember when exactly. Uh, probably like 2010. My first time was, I, I guess, like in, in Canada. It was in 2002. It was uh, the Warp Tour. And I was, uh, I was playing drums for an all girl punk rock band called the Eyeliners. Yep. Counting Crows at Salt Air in Salt Lake City. And it was amazing. They're a great band. Um, they had a terrible opening act though. I still remember them. They're called uh, The Find. And their singer was also their drummer, kind of like Jellyfish, but like not mm -hmm. as good. And he wore this like, this like man blouse that was like unbuttoned down here. And he had one of those head, head mics, you know, like boy bands have. <sighs> so yep. it was, mm -hmm. sorry, The Find. I don't know if you're watching this, but probably mine not. was a- uh... Sorry, I, I didn't like it, that was just me. I want to say mine was, J I think it was James Taylor when I was like four. I used to get a lot of shows with my parents when I was like really young. To my wife. You know, I think when you're growing up you think that you know what love is, but as you get older, you know, those relationships and those moments get context and you realize that they're uh, not as big as you thought they were at the time, you know. So when I met my, my wife and we uh, were together for a while, I. I told her that I loved her for the first time. And, uh, first person I've ever actually been like in love with. So I had to marry her, and I did. Good work. <laughs> first time I said I love you. Um, I think when I first meant it was uh, I had this uh, best friend girl that I lived next door to, and she was basically like my like first girlfriend, you know. And we just we were friends for years, you know, and then. Uh, it's a little dark here, but then she, she got in a car accident. But that was, that was a long, long time ago. Oh man, uh, I think it was from this uh, bass amp company called Aguilar, who is who I use today. They uh, did a really great company and uh, reached out to me at some point and wanted me to sample some of their stuff and I ended up really loving it. And still use them to this day, good company. <laughs> Mine would have been minor symbols, so they gave, they gave me a stack, and ever since then, I just haven't turned back. Best symbol company out there. 
That's hard to say because yeah. I think I still really love every band that I've ever yeah. fallen in love with. It's just my musical taste has evolved more. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's stuff that I, you know, listen to less now that I'm yeah. other things like, you know, that I still love like Nirvana and Pearl Jam. Yeah, like when you go back and visit it, it's like it's really special, but I don't think I've outgrown yeah. uh, the, the stuff I grew up listening to. Yeah, I think it's because I've only ever liked cool things. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, 2010, I met Green Day backstage at a show that wasn't theirs. It was like a, we, we were all there watching uh, this guy Jesse Mallon in uh, New York City, and we all just ended up backstage just hanging out, and it was really surreal. The first one that I can remember is meeting a band called I'm a Robot in like 2006 or seven maybe. I was such a huge fan of them. Their bass player, Justin Melba Johnson, played with Beck for like 20 something years and I was such a fan of his. And just that band in general, I, I just happened to come across them outside of one of their shows. We're all crossing the street together and it, I did the fanboy thing, you know, I love you guys. And then they hooked me up with like tickets and backstage passes. They were on tour with Duran Duran at the time. And such a great moment for me, but I guarantee you I was so awkward and nerdy <laughs> and just like a punisher for these dudes, you know, which yeah. I feel bad about today, but uh, yeah, I mean, really special moment. You know, yeah, you never know if you're going to get that moment again. Exactly, you know? yeah. So. I feel like that's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> you're implying that I'm yeah. not good at something. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not good at sports, and I realized nope. it when I was a, a young man, like all of my brothers and sisters we're good at sports, friends, people at school, they all play basketball and, and stuff like that. And I, I gave it a try, but it just wasn't for me. I think I was just genetically inclined to be a musician, you know? So I found out pretty quick that not only was I not good at sports, but like everyone else knew and didn't appreciate the fact that I wasn't like them in that regard. So it's probably why I still don't like sports today, but. Yeah, I'm music not a big sports guy. <clears throat> Don't ask me to throw a football; I won't get very far. <laughs> Might maybe reach him. Yeah. But let's see you play a baseline, Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> a couple days ago. Yeah, same. I'm trying to get her to to babysit to my family's dog for a couple days so we can go really? to the wedding. That's weird because my how mom rock and roll is that, right? <laughs> my mom wanted me to watch the cats in like a couple weeks. Mm. So that's really, that's really, uh... That's the bizarre. reality, ladies and gentlemen. It's <laughs> the reality. I'm gonna go in the hot tub. Today's the day off. Yeah, today's the only day off we have on this tour. So yeah. we need to figure out something cool. I kind of want to see a movie. Yeah. There's still, a, I still want to see Deadpool 2, Solo, or A Quiet Place. Any one of those three. Yeah, I need to go see Deadpool again. I, I fell asleep when I went, like, a couple weeks ago. Whoops. Falls asleep at every movie. He's I seen. do. <laughs> I felt, I, He's okay. never seen the ending of any movie. Okay, here's the deal. I actually have fallen asleep in all Star Wars movies. That's the only. That's the only way we we're different. Like for real. Like I'm not. A, I'm not a Star Wars guy. He loves Star Wars. It's Yin and Yang. You know. Um, yeah, I've never been able to. Uh, down. <laughs> down. This interview is bullcrap. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay.